Wow. Les, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. More importantly, thank you for uh, articulating uh, what we know it means to live out here in the Midwest. Care for your neighbors. <laughs> Kindness. I want to acknowledge a few people today. Um, somebody who I have to tell you might be the kindest human being I have ever met. Your governor, Tony Evers. A dear friend of mine who I had a chance to serve with in the House of Representatives, an incredible senator, Tammy Baldwin. The people's lawyer, your attorney general, Josh Call. And someone who knows education is the foundation of everything, State Superintendent Jill Underly. All the state and local officials are here, but I want to say that putting a personal privilege on this, I got a bunch of my family down here in the front. So, so <laughs> I come. A couple of them, a couple of them are Badgers too, by the way, so. And a real special thank you to everybody here. Looking out across here, look, you're busy people. You got things to do. It's a summer day. You had to walk two miles. I had nothing to do with that, by the way, nothing. <laughs> so. But you came here for one beautiful, simple reason. You love this country and this democracy. I couldn't be prouder to be on this ticket to help make Kamala Harris the next president of the United States. You know it. Vice President Harris is on the side of the American people. She took on predators, fraudsters, transnational gang members. She stood up against powerful corporate interests, and she never hesitated, not once, to reach across the aisle if it improved people's lives. <laughs> Being a Midwesterner, too, I know a little something about commitment to people. I was born in a small town in Nebraska where community meant everything. My mom and dad taught me to show generosity to my neighbors and work for a common good. At 17, I joined the Army National Guard. For 24 years, I proudly wore the uniform of this nation. And, and that service, just as it did for my dad, a Korean War era veteran, and millions of others, I got the GI Bill and it gave me a shot at a college education. My dad was a teacher. My siblings were all teachers. And three of them married teachers. It's noble work. I had the privilege of teaching public school, social studies, and coaching football for 20 years. And for all you Packer and Badgers fan, yeah, we did win a state championship, so <laughs> it's what we do. But it was my students who encouraged me to run for office. I never thought that much about it, but they saw in me what I was hoping to instill in them. This idea of a commitment to a better world, a common good, a belief that one single person can actually make a difference. I lived in a red district, but my neighbors were kind enough and graced me with the opportunity to go to the United States House of Representatives for 12 years to represent them. I learned how to compromise without compromising my values. And as governor of the great state of Minnesota, I brought all that experience. Okay, okay. Are there Minnesotans in the house today? Yeah. 
bringing that experience to tackling the challenges that we're facing our state. We don't shy away from challenges, but I'll tell you what, Donald Trump, he sees the world differently than we see it. He has no understanding of service because he's too busy servicing himself. Again and again and again, again and again and again, this guy weakens our country to strengthen his own hands. He mocks our laws. He sows chaos and division amongst the people. And that's to say nothing of the job he did as president. He froze in the face of COVID and it cost people's lives. He drove the economy into the ground. And make no mistake about it, violent crime was up when Donald Trump was president. Those of you who are a little older know this. Older Republicans used to talk about freedom. These guys today, it turns out that freedom to them means government should be free to invade your exam room with your doctor. Now look, we're pretty neighborly with Wisconsin. We get our friendly battles, but in Minnesota, just like in Wisconsin, we respect our neighbors and the personal choices they make. Even if, even if we wouldn't make the same choices for ourselves, because we know there's a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. Mind your own damn business. I don't need you telling me about our health care. I don't need you telling us who we love. And I sure the hell don't need you telling us what books we're going to read. And there's a very personal one for me, and that includes IVF. Some of you might have heard this. This is very personal for my wife and I. When Gwen and I decided to have children, we went through years of fertility treatments. And I remember each night praying that the call was going to come and it was going to be good news. The phone would ring, tenseness in my stomach, and then the agony when you heard the treatments hadn't worked. So it wasn't by chance that when we welcomed our first child, our beautiful daughter, we named her Hope. When Vice President Harris and I and everyone here talks about freedom, we mean the freedom to make your own health care decisions. And for all of our little ones to be free to go to school without worrying about being shot dead in their classroom. And just like Wisconsin over in Minnesota, we believe in the Second Amendment, but we also believe in common sense gun violence laws. And just so you know, when I was in Congress, I was the top gun at the trap shoot three years in a row. I can outshoot them too. I can outshoot these guys. Look, freedom is when freedom. Oh, can we, can we get somebody to help? Somebody's hot. Somebody's hot. Can we get somebody to help? You okay? Drink some water, folks. It is hot out. Get somebody up. Thank you. Can you get water? <laughs> so, so weird. Okay? So weird. Thank you. That's so yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for helping. Grateful. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care of one another on this. This is, this is why we gather. Look, it's hot. It is hot. I'll come again. They've got folks here. We'll, we'll make sure. It... 
we're okay. But I, I have to tell you all again, I, in all seriousness, to come and gather like this, to talk about our freedoms, the ability to talk about what could be good. And I have to say, this idea of caring for our neighbor and kindness and a hand up when somebody needs it, or just the sense of that people go through things and to be able to be there when they need it, uh, that's who we are. It's not about mocking, it's not name callings. And you see it amongst them. Thank you all. They do. Thank you all. We're eat we're okay. He's gonna we have someone down. They're treating him, they're getting him some water, and it's good. He's going to get up. You guys need some water, too? We'll ask him. Teddy, can you see if they have some more water? That'd be great. Take care of your neighbors. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, folks. Hey, they're getting him taken care of. I uh, will stay. Uh, I don't want to be too lighthearted. I thought about doing the Minnesota Rouser, but I thought that might be too much over here on you. Look, we'll get we'll get him taken care of. You know what this is about. This is about when they talk about the freedoms that we heard. And freedom in education means that our teachers aren't saddled with crippling debt when they go into this. That student loan debt. And I'll tell you what a big part of this is. We settle our political differences, not through violence, but through our votes. The question is pretty simple. This election is all about asking that question. Which direction will this country go in? Donald Trump knows the direction he wants to take us. He wants to take it back. He wants to do the things that you saw, but be very clear. Don't believe him when he plays dumb. He knows exactly what he's talking about. He knows exactly what Project 2025 will do in restricting and taking our freedoms. He knows that it rigs the economy for the super rich. If he gets a chance to go back to the White House, it will be far worse than it was four years ago. <laughs> Raising costs for the middle class, repeating, repealing the Affordable Care Act, gutting Social Security and Medicare, the very safety nets that protect people when they're down. And of course, banning abortions across this country with or without Congress. This is where we talk to our neighbors. Donald Trump is not for you or your family. And Trump's running mate shares those same dangerous and backward beliefs. You know, just like all of us in regular America, we, uh, we go to Yale and then we have our careers funded by Silicon Valley billionaires and then you write a book about the place you grew up and you trash that place. Come on, that's not who Wisconsin is. That's not who Minnesota is. We're better than that. We're better than that. One of the best parts of this job is gonna be, I can't wait till the debate. <laughs> so. Look, I, I've done this enough and I know bullies uh, and I'm not a name caller, but what I am as a teacher, I observe things. So I want to tell you what I observed and you've deserved about, you observed about these guys when you see them, that it's a very clear thing. Yes, they are creepy and, and weird as hell. You see it, you see it. This is not normal. This is not normal behavior. Nobody's asking for this crazy stuff. So I'll tell you what, you heard it from the vice president. You've heard her talk about this. We're sure the hell not going back. We're not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. Not 
We damn sure aren't, but it's even more than that. This is a campaign about where we're going, and that's a future where everyone matters and everyone's included. <laughs> Kamala Harris, she believes in the freedom to make your own choices. She believes in opportunity for every single person to join the middle class. And she believes in the promise of America. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for the trust that you've placed in me.